Well, hello guys. I hope we are live. I'm going to try something here just a minute to make sure. Having a little technical difficulties on this Sunday. But I'm hoping that you can see me and hear me. Okay, I just got a thumbs up from Hubby, so he says we're good. So if you're here, put in the comments, please. Hi, Joanne. So I know that you guys can uh, can see and hear me before we get started on this Valentine special. Yeah, I had a little issues with Facebook, and uh, so uh, it looks like you can see me. Got a couple here commenting, please tell me. Hi, Leanne. Hi, Robin. Yeah, good. It, it's looking good, guys. That's a plus. That's a big plus. <laughs> if you watch very many people on Facebook, I used to think it was just me, guys. It's not. I mean, there might be times that it's just me. I don't want to say that, <laughs> that I'm the best in the technology field, but... I tell you what, this beast have a mind, has a mind of its own sometimes, and it happens when you least expect it. That's the thing. So I had to log in and out a couple of times, and uh, then it put up a thing that said I was banned, and I thought, what am I banned from? I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> so apparently I wasn't banned long because there I am. So... <laughs> Hi guys, I'm glad you're joining me today, and uh, give me a thumbs up. I suppose you can hear me and see me and all that, so uh, that's a good thing. That's a really good thing, right? But today, of course, we are going to do Sweets for the Sweetheart, right here. I did this one on wood. Hi Dorothy. Uh, uh, hi Shelly. And, uh, but you can do it, as I said before, you can do it on mixed media uh, pad, you can do it on watercolor paper, you can do it on canvas. Uh, today, and most of my tutorials, I do go ahead and I put them here on a uh, mixed media pad, which you will see here in just a minute. And if my overhead camera works, where we're praying it does, uh, you will be able to see all the uh, things that we've got in the supplies. So, I hope everybody got their uh, tracer if you wanted it. Um, I had put links down a couple of times, so uh, I'm glad that you did. A lot of people just sketch it out themselves, and then some people uh, would like a tracer. You know, everybody's different, and everybody's at different stages in their art, so I understand that completely, completely. Uh, I am going to uh, turn my camera over here just a minute it looks like we've got several people on and and uh, so the comments are working fine I believe and let's see uh, let me kind of get my phone on here just a minute because sometimes you can see it on oops on your desktop and sometimes you can't and um, so I just try to cover all steps I have learned to do that I try to cover all steps so, okay, guys, who's ready to paint? I'm ready to paint. It's uh, kind of cold here, and we still have a little bit of snow on the ground here in uh, Indiana, southern Indiana. And it's just a nice <coughs> afternoon to go ahead and uh, paint like that. So, uh, and there's my dog. Um, you know, I think it's going to be one of them, one of these days, I think, guys. So, I'm going to turn the camera around and uh, let you see the supplies. So there's Reese. She is uh, barking. She hears something outside. Um, let's see. I think we've got some. I know some of you will watch now and maybe paint later, and some of you will paint with me. So let's go over the supplies. You should be able to see that on your screen now. Uh, I have got my watercolor pencil, and I'm using my mixed media pad here. Um, I've got the sample right here, and I'll kind of move that around as we're painting so you can see that. I've got my water back here, which I've got an old, 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 old water thing, so it, it looks muddy, but it's actually clean water. 
<laughs> so here is our paints that we have. I have red, white, black, brown. I have a pink down. And then I have a uh, kind of a darker shade or a medium shade actually of green here. Now I'm trying to use up some tube paint. A lot of the times I mix my paint and if you don't have pink, as I said in the uh, description, you can mix of course your red and your white and create a paint. I'm trying to use up some of uh, my paints because like I said, I do like to uh, mix my paints more now and create my own shades. So I just went ahead and put some down, especially for the tutorial, so you can kind of see the colors that I used in this painting right here. And you can see the kind of the lighter pink. And uh, anyway, let's get going, guys. So if you have your paper, your canvas, whatever that you are going to use, I'm going to move this down just a tiny bit and move this over and get it in line a little bit more. I've got my red on today. I've got my little hat on. It's got some red on. Guys, I am rocking the Valentine's today. So let's go ahead and let's sketch. If you already have got yours traced, which I asked you to, that's fantastic. It will take me just about a second here to do this. But I'm going to show you in case that you want to trace this. I'm using a watercolor pencil and I'm using a color that you should be able, and I'm going to do mine darker. You don't need to do it that dark because you just don't need to. You only sketch it out as dark as that you can see it. I do it darker to show you guys so you can see online. So here's basically kind of the shape. You need to round it out maybe just a little bit more, but you know it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to paint this, right? So I've got my shape. Now you can do it any way you want. I angled mine as you can see, my little heart chocolate box. You could do it upright, uh, do it uh, you know, vertical if you would like. I just kind of like, I like angles sometimes. Uh, add just a little bit of character. So I am angling this one also here. So the first step, oh, you also need your hair dryer if you've got one to help uh, it dry a little bit quicker. So the first step we are going to do, guys, is I've got my half inch brush here, and I'm going to dip it in the pink. So if you don't have any pink, go ahead and mix that up. You have that. We've got a rocking palette here. Let's see what it's laying on. Laying on something. And what we're going to do is just load up your brush and start painting that heart, all of it. Now keep your brush strokes smooth. Try to keep it smooth. If your paint gets thick, I always kind of remind everybody to just barely dip your brush in a little bit of water. If the paint's too thick, load up some more paint and work that in your brush and it creates it more smooth, consistency. You don't want many ridges. In this and the reason is is just because this is a tutorial and we want to let it dry not take all day to dry right if you create a lot of ridges it just takes longer it's thicker paint it just takes longer to uh, dry so I'm kind of smoothing out my paint so it won't take as long to dry just work your paint back and forth there Turn it around the way that you like, the way it's easier for yourself to paint. We want it to be fun. Got people from all over, it looks like again. I'm glad you joined. I'm so happy when you join. Okay, now depending on, I've got mine coated here. One of the base coat. Let that dry. 
I'd wash my brush out. Blot it on my towel, get it back over here. So see the bottom part is just your pink. You can't really tell it much right now, but it's just the pink. Doesn't have to be uh, perfect because we're going to put so much on top of that. All of our candies, of course, our chocolates. And uh, then we also have a little bit more that we shade in here. So, But as long as you have a decent coverage, which I think mine is just fine here, I think we're doing good. Now the next thing that we need to do is I'm going to take uh, still my half inch brush. Now you can do this two ways. You also should have your round brush here too. So it's, it's kind of up to you. I've also asked you to bring your other brush, your filbert brush, which your filbert brush, see the difference here? Look on here, I'll probably see it better. You know, this is a flat brush, it's straight across, and your filbert here, look how the bristles are kind of rounded. See how that's rounded? Well, the reason I ask you if you have one to bring your filbert, it's a little bit easier to paint with if you're doing like the heart, if it's a little round brush, or sometimes like the, the end of your strawberry, you know, just places that these were made with the little filbert brush here. So uh, if you have one, great. If you don't, that's fine too. You don't have to have that. You can use a half inch brush. You can use your round brush, whatever you want. So this is a round brush, of course, it's small, and here's your flat. I'm going to show you on the next step how to use your flat brush here. So I'm kind of dipping it in the water, blotting it on my towel over here. Get that a little closer, you can see, kind of just blotting it on my towel. And as you can see, see around here, little scallops, and that's basically all it is, is little red scallops. I am going to take my flat brush and I'm dipping just a corner. These lights make my paint dry fast, so. See, I'm dipping just a corner of it. It's not much in my, on my uh, brush. Dipping it in the red, kind of working it back and forth a little bit on my brush. Now there's a couple of ways to do this. I'm going to show you one way here. We're going to start in the center top of the heart. Now we are painting on the outside. We're not painting in the pink. So I'm taking my brush and I'm just doing... You well, we can see right now I have to add a little bit of water to it. My paint's getting dry. So I'm going like this, little scallops. See? Just like that. Try to keep them as much the same size and shape that you can. This takes a little bit to do. See, I'm just kind of trying to keep my brush flat and just going around. Now don't worry if you get a little bit here. It's going to pick up a little bit and we'll go over that on the pink. So just going to slowly lift your brush out and come back in from the heart. Out and in. Out and in. But the main thing is keep your brush as flat as you can. See? Doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying to make some little tiny scallops here around. Looks like kind of lace, you know, colored lace. Make sure though your your paint is kind of fluid. You don't want it too thick. Need to add a little bit of water. Like I said, the lights sometimes make mine uh, dry out pretty quick. Now 
I'm going to show you a little bit here, a different way to do this, if you just absolutely don't like that. I'm going to get my small round brush here. I always try to show a couple of ways in case, you know, like I said, everybody's at different stages in their creative journey. Now, I have just got straight paint on my round brush. And this is a different way. Just go around like this. Just paint your little scallops like that and fill them in. It kind of gives you two ways of doing it. And there's not a right or a wrong. You might like one a little bit better than the other. So that kind of gives you two ways to do this. Go ahead and go back to my original. So my heart's going to have some variety. I personally like this technique better, but I just think it looks a little airy and, and light. And, but if you don't, there's two ways to do it, right? I'm going to try to lighten up mine over here that I did for a sample. You can lighten up paint. See how I'm doing that? I'm just adding some water to it, and it will lift. It's kind of like watercolor. You can lift with watercolor, of course, easier than you can acrylic paint, but you can lift with watercolor or uh, acrylic paint too, like I'm doing here. This is called lifting when you you're trying to just lift your paint off there. I'm working on that a little bit. You might need to go over a few places, make them kind of more the same. See, I've got, of course, dark here where I did a different technique. This is darker through here. You might want to go over a couple to make them, try to get them a little bit more similar in shape or color. Turning my brush around the other direction so I can go the other way. I think maybe this is, I hope this hasn't scared anybody because I think this is probably maybe one of the hardest parts of it. If you want to say that, more challenging. Just trying to get it, you know, more similar. There we go. That's better on my end. And then if there's anything that I need to touch up with the pink, now is the time to do it. Just kind of go over that, that edges, right up. She might have got some red in there. Kind of clean that up a little bit. Looks a lot better there. Hi, Sandra. Yeah, yeah, that's one good thing about these. If, you know, is you can watch the replay. Not everybody has the same schedule, of course. And, and like I said, a lot of people will uh, watch. And that way they can watch the replay. They can stop and start it. It works out pretty good. I like it. When everything's working good, right? So this is where we need to stop at when uh, you get to this point. Take a little breather. I'm going to have my, uh, I've got some tea here going on. I've got some peppermint tea. 
take a couple of sips and let you guys get caught up. You also need to dry this. It needs to be pretty dry. Uh, so I'm going to put mine underneath the table here, my work table, and dry it while you guys are kind of working on yours, getting caught up. Sorry about that, but I don't know any other way to do it <laughs> with that. I try to put it under the table so uh, maybe not be quite as lazy. So how are we doing, guys? For those of you that are painting with me, most of you got this going. We've got, uh, is it Tia from Oregon? Shelly, Robin, Leanne. Leanne, I'm glad you can join us today. Joanne, Kathy, Dorothy, like I said, you got it, Kathy. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. We're going to go ahead and move on. Hopefully you... Those that, because uh, I have no idea who is painting and watching, and uh, so we're going to kind of, I try to give you a little breaks in between so people can get caught up. So uh, we're going to go ahead and sketch here. Now, like I said, you can use a pencil. I use a watercolor uh, pencil most of the time. But take a look at our shape. We've got our heart shape. We've got the background here. We've got uh, most of the little uh, ruffles around it. And now we're going to start on some chocolates. Now, you kind of have to look at the size that you've done here. And you, uh, when you start sketching, you have to look at the shape of things that you're sketching and also get it in appropriate areas and uh, uh, spaces, right? So. You don't want to get them too close together. You try to uh, create the, the uh, area, uh, like try to keep it uh, uh, like the spaces similar, like from here and over here, as much as you can. You can't do it exactly. But like the, for those that have got the tracer, uh, you go ahead and lay your tracer now on here. And then you can put your chocolates the way uh, they are on the tracer. But for those of you that don't have the tracer, I'm going to go through and we're going to quickly sketch these simple shapes here, right? So we're going to start at this rectangle. When you sketch, you're always looking at the shapes of things, no matter what you're trying to sketch. So, of course, this is just a rectangle. I have kind of rounded a little bit of the corners just to make it look a little bit more chocolatey and more like a, more like a chocolate. So I can see I'm going to have to uh, change my pencil here. So I've got it up in the upper part of the right side of my heart. So kind of just sketch, rough sketch, how you want the shape. Just simple. Don't have to worry about it right there. Can you see that? Let me uh, raise that up for you. Can you see that sketch there? Okay. So let's go back down, and we're going to kind of jump around here. I think it'd be easier so you could get the uh, spaces more even. Now we're going to jump back down to the bottom part of the heart. This is a long rectangle, a little bit longer than this one, and it's in the bottom left. So I'm going to go ahead and do my long rectangle here, like that, right down here. Make it a little darker so you can see it a little bit better. You see that now? Yeah. You'll probably see it better. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I'm glad you do, Leanne. Okay, we've got the one here at the top, one at the bottom. Now that is all the rectangles we have. Now we're going to jump uh, to the circles. The, we have a uh, chocolate right here that's a circle, 
in the left part of the heart. And it's probably, you know, it's bigger than a quarter. You know, I'm going to get you estimate size. Just kind of go around, just sketch it out. There you go. Now our other circle, chocolate, is back down here at the bottom. It's down here right close to the rectangle chocolate. Okay, so we have two at the bottom, and we have two shapes at the top. Let's go ahead and do the squares. We've got a square on the upper right side. Okay. And then right across over here between, it's on the left side of the heart, between the circle chocolate and the rectangle of chocolate, we have a square. Just a shape. I think it's easier to do it like this. If you start, I recommend doing it like this. If you start sketching something that you've got several pieces to it, I personally, there's several ways to do it. Some people start like in the center and go out. Some people start on one sh on, the si on the side. I kind of jump around, especially for something like this where you want it to all to fit right in here, right? So we'll see how well we do this. But uh, I just think it's uh, better to do. So we've got the two circle chocolates. We've got the two rectangle chocolates. We've got the two squares. So the last ones that we have is our pretty little heart here and our strawberry. Now these are the focal points, I feel like, of the, the painting. Uh, they're not exactly in the center, but that's okay. I'm fine with that. So look and see the shape or the size that you have left and kind of go with that. So my heart is going to be up here. So I'm going to go around and do, I've got to make sure I have room for my strawberries. So now it's kind of a, uh, a time that you just kind of easy sketch, not too hard yet, and try to fit in. where you think they look the best. And I think they're going to look the best just right here myself. I've got the shapes going on here. Okay, that works pretty good. If I need to make my, my uh, uh, one of them a little larger, I can kind of bring this out a little bit more if I have too much space here. So see, I just moved one a little bit, moved it out. I like that a little bit better. Get it the way you, you like it. And then we're going to start painting, guys. So as you can see, we have, um, like I said earlier, we have red for our paints. We have white. We have pink. We have a dark uh, kind of a chocolate brown. And then we're going to mix a little bit for the topping on here. We've got uh, black for some uh, uh, seeds on here. And we've got green. Okay. Let's start painting this top right one that is the chocolate brown. Let me see if I can move that a little bit. There we go. If we can get something underneath that. Hold that, but maybe that'll maybe that'll stay there. Put it in my coffee cup handle here. There we go. Let me see. So I'm going to use my half inch flat brush. This bad boy needs a haircut. I must have put him in wrong. He's got some bristles going crazy on me. I am loading my brush in the dark brown. Let's go ahead and paint. And now is the time as you're painting, of course, you can, if you need to increase the size of your chocolate there, you, now's the time to do it. Get the shape that you want. Like I said, I'm going to round, kind of round my edges a little bit, my corners, not my edges, but my corners. Now, this is a painting that we're going to jump around with, so 
as you get this one coated, I'm going to go back down to this one right here, the other rectangle. We're kind of going to do like we uh, sketched. Hope everybody's having a good Sunday, and I'm glad you guys are joining today. Keep your paint smooth. Just for the fact of letting it dry a little quicker, and we're not waiting on that, you know. Now the other dark chocolate part you can tell is the circle up here, forehead, and I'm using the same brush. Going around in a circle. Remember, if your paint starts getting thick, then just add, this is acrylic paint, so thin it out with water. You can use medium, but we don't need to do that for this at all. Just add a little bit of water to it. Go ahead and jump on around to your other chocolate circle. These don't have to be perfect circles here. They're chocolate, right? They're chocolate. Now by the time you maybe get around to these, you might be able, it just depends where you're at and uh, you might be able to give it another coat. Mine needs two coats, my chocolate does. I don't like it to, I want it to look like chocolate, right? Even though we're going to put some toppings on here, you still want the base of it to look nice. So by the time you get around to painting all of them, you should maybe be able to start again and get your second. Look at the difference between this one here, the second coat, and this one here. You know, so you want it to look like this here. Now, if you need to zap it with a dryer, go right ahead. These, in my case, like I said, the lights are kind of drying a little faster, so I'm doing pretty good with it. Around the, around the corners a little bit. More. For those of you that might not know, I have a painting membership. It's a monthly painting membership called PJs and Paintbrushes, and we are going to do a large, larger chocolate candy box for next month. Should be a lot of fun. That's one of our things we're going to need. We also have a cake. We're going to do a strawberry cake. I don't know why I'm just kind of in the mood of putting food for February. I don't <laughs> We've done winter things. So I'm I'm kinda after this after this food, we're gonna be doing lots of fun spring things. So I guess I had to throw in some food for February. Okay now don't do your chocolate on your strawberry yet. If you have it's not a big deal. But I'm going to wait on that. I'm going to get my red first and then do my chocolate on the strawberry because it kind of gives it the, when you when you go the chocolate over the, the strawberry, it kind of gives it that look that it's dipped, honestly. And um, so I'm going to wait on that. So I do have my four dark chocolates here. 
and I've got two coats on there. I'll wash my brush out. Everybody still doing good? Drink a tea. Let's see what you everybody's doing. I'm sure glad the video finally got to working. We're going to go ahead now and these two white ones here, we're going to just take, I'm going to use the same brush actually and uh, dip it in my white. Work it on my palette and my get it through my brush, my bristles, and I'm painting. Covering up my sketching here. Like I said, if you need to enlarge it, now's the time to do it. it didn't quite get the right sketching you wanted. No harm in that. Here, so go ahead and do both of those. My white seems to be covering pretty good. So just, you know, if you need another coat, you can dry it. Wow, somebody sounds like, I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. Like they're racing on the racetrack out there. Going down the road. Okay, get that coated just kind of like you did with your chocolate. You don't want to be able to see any of the pink through there. Get that done. Go ahead and wash your brush out. Like I said, we're kind of just jumping around on this one. The next we're going to do is we're going to coat the red. So when we get to the strawberry, we're going to just coat the top probably half. And then the heart, of course, we're doing all of it. So I'm going to use my filbert brush. Remember the filbert is the one with the bristles that's kind of rounded on the end. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to dip it in the red. It just kind of makes, if you have a filbert brush, I would use that. It uh, makes it edges so uh, uh, just easier to paint than with a flat brush. Like this heart, see how it just automatically almost just makes that top of that heart. I don't use mine a lot, but occasionally it comes in handy. It'll probably need, depending on your red and on your paint, it will probably need a couple of coats too. Turn my flip it around here. Now, since the strawberry and the heart is kind of your kind of your focal point, actually, 
try to make sure that you get the shapes that you want on that. Make sure, you know, it's a nice shaped heart and strawberry. But your eyes kind of uh, go in on those two chocolates. When you look at the painting, that area, that's kind of where they go. And part of that's because of the color. It's also fairly centered. A variety of reasons, but try to get your shape the way you like. stop there. Sometimes you can fiddle too long. Before we put the toppings on the candies, you do want to make sure that you like the, the base coat that you've done. The chocolate and the red. Now we are going to do some shading for us on that. As you can see here, we've got quite a bit of shading to go. Look at the difference. I mean, look at the difference in the painting. Such a, such a difference. And that just basically, we have the same things on each one, but this has got your, your shading in it. And this one doesn't yet. As you can tell, it's such a difference. Now you have to make sure that, um, like I said, you get your base colors the way you want them and then uh, give it a quick zap with a hair dryer and we will start shading here in just a minute. I'm going to go over my red just a little bit. Okay guys, now I'm going to dry mine. Uh, with the hair dryer before we do any more. If you have one, I would go ahead and do that too. Still doing good? Probably busy painting, I think. I know it always, the uh, messaging always gets a little quiet once we get busy here. Because we're concentrating, right? Having fun and concentrating. Once you get to this point, what we need to do is do the chocolate around the strawberry here. So what I have done, I thought it was easier if I turn my piece around and started from the bottom of that strawberry and kind of come up. And if you notice, I have some little ridges here too. It's not just straight across. Now, if you want to, that's fine. But I kind of made mine a little scalloping too. Maybe look like a little bit of it was thicker when they dipped it than the other. I'm going to use my filbert again because it's rounded on the end. I'm going to turn this around, load up my brush in the dark brown, start at the very end of the strawberry, come up. See how that brush just automatically kind of makes the end of the strawberry just perfect. Now I am, what makes this look more like chocolate dipped I'm not just going on the red here. See, I'm coming out side of that red just a little bit, just a little bit. You want it to be a little bit wider than your strawberry. And that gives it more of a, of a dipped chocolate look. Like 
a little bit dipped on the edges there. Okay, I'll raise that up a little bit so you can see. See how I kind of went around outside a little bit of the outline of that strawberry. So it gives it the look of, of hand dipped. Now it will probably need two coats too, just like all the other ones have had. I'm going to just let that dry on its own. And uh, I think the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to get my liner brush out. My liner is kind of long and narrow. And the reason for that is when you add water to your paint, so I'm going to go uh, in my white. I've added water on my brush and I've dipped it also, pulled off some of the white here, see off to the side, and I'm creating kind of an inky consistency to my paint. See how thin that is? It's not so thin that you can see through it by any means, but it works well with the brush. And you just kind of twist it around, load that brush up. You see how you have a pretty good loaded brush of a thin, thinner paint. And on the chocolate here, I've just got zigzags on it. So let's zigzag that first piece of chocolate at the top. I'm starting at the top left, going down, and coming back, going down, coming back, however you want to do it. This is a little different than what I've done on the uh, start of my zigger zag. My zigger zag a little different. <laughs> That's okay. We just want some kind of a zigzag right there on your chocolate. Now I'm going to kind of turn my canvas part around and see how this bottom chocolate has just got diagonal kind of stripes, They're angled. I'm going to do the same thing. Now when you have your paint kind of inky, it will just flow from that brush pretty good. And that takes some practice. It does take some practice. Sometimes it's too thick and it doesn't work well. If you want your stripes just a little wider, if you got them too thin, just go over them again. Line work takes a little bit of practice. Don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged at all. All of this takes a little practice. And I'm going to go over mine a little bit to make it just a little wider. And a little bit more icing on the, I guess that's icing, chocolate. So I've got those two. Now while I still have some white on my liner brush, this top round, I'm just going to dot, just kind of make some marks. Just kind of lines, dots, whatever you want while I still have a little bit on my brush. Just some sprinkles. Put some sprinkles on there. However many you like. Doesn't matter. Okay. And wash out my brush. Now, my uh, chocolate on my strawberry is dry, so before we go on, I'm going to get my Filbert brush again, and I'm going to go over the chocolate part. It needs it another another time. Yours might be fine, but mine needed a little coat. OK, 
Kathy, I'm glad you're doing good. Good. We might have several that's watching and then we're doing it later too. And you know that happens. Can you touch up anything while you're waiting on anything to dry? Now's the time to do that. Okay. Now we have some line work on the square. And also, well, both squares are just a little different. This square at the top right, I've kind of done a uh, curly cue. So what I'm doing is dipping my brush into the water, and I'm pulling out some of this lighter pink. Now you can use whatever color you want. And just like I did the white, I'm adding a little bit of water to that paint so I can get it thinner. And I'm going to put my brush, see how it's just standing up. I'm starting on one kind of corner, and I'm going to just do a curly cue. Now this takes some practice too. You take your time. There we go. And fix it up how you like it. This one down here, same color, I load up my brush again. Now I've just got uh, a mixture. See here, I've got a mixture of a uh, kind of a lighter uh, chocolate with pink, and then a lighter chocolate with pink, lighter chocolate. But I first started doing two pink squiggles. So I started at one side, like that. like that. You can leave it like that. That's kind of cute, I think. I forgot while I've, I've washed my brush up, but I'm going to load up some of that pink again, and I'm making some more sprinkles in that top left chocolate. We're good guys. Okay, while we're doing that top left chocolate, I'm going to dip it in the red. Still your liner brush. And this is the last bit of sprinkles on this little guy. Just do a few red dashes or dots, whatever, however you want to do your sprinkles. So this top chocolate has white sprinkles, pink, and red on it. So we're done with this one here. Once you get those three sprinkles on it. This one, this white chocolate here with the pink swirl, it's done except for shading. Now, right up here and right over here has got, and right here has got a little bit different color chocolate, right? So let's mix that now. Now it depends on what colors you have here, but I am going to take my brush and I'm going to pull out a little bit of brown. And I'm going to go on the side of my white here so I don't contaminate all of my white. A lot of times I get a palette knife and I kind of dip it in there, but since we're kind of doing this, I'm just mixing a kind of a milk chocolate lighter chocolate get that to the consistency you like now if you don't like mixing paint then you just you might already have a shade that you want to use that's fine too not going to need much at all so i've kind of got a, a chocolate that i i like and a little bit more brown to it i think though And while I have my filbert already loaded, I'm going to just add some little nuggets here. I added one in the center. 
And then that helps me kind of decide how many more I want on the edges. And they're they're not really circles, they're just like little nuggets. I don't know what they are. I am not a candy maker, guys. I don't know what you'd call that. If you got any idea, let me know. Now, if you have a little bit of a yellow ochre color, let me show you what color that is. If you happen to have a little bit of yellow ochre, which is like here in your stash, let me show you what happens. I didn't put that on the list. Well, if I can get this little guy open, he's wanting to get a little contrary. Here we go. And I'm going to add just a tiny bit just to show you. In our membership, we like to mix colors and stuff. And I just kind of wanted to show you. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow ochre to that color I already mixed. Probably a little bit more brown here. And it will give us just a completely different color. More of a kind of a caramel. See? More of a caramel kind of a color. That's what it is. It's drops of caramel on there. That's what I'm going to call it. Like I said, I'm not a... Except Christmas time now. I make some candy sometimes. I'm not a professional candy maker. See, so just adding another little color to that. If I went too crazy, I always take my chocolate and shrink these little things up some. You can kind of change it however you want. Just take your dark chocolate and if you get carried away like I do sometimes and they get too big. <laughs> that happens. You just change it. It's your painting. You're the artist. Change it how you would like it. Okay, let's finish these details here. I'm going to take my liner brush here and any kind of that, that kind of lighter chocolate that I've created, I'm going to add my other squiggles here. white chocolate. Okay. I've also added just a little bit of line work. You can see a lighter chocolate. I don't know if you can see it about the white here. And then I have kind of a milk chocolate. And I've just kind of touched it here and there. So it kind of looks, it still looks like a caramel, doesn't it? I think it looks more like a caramel color. Caramel. The main thing, I just wanted to kind of show a couple of different ingredients in the chocolate, I guess. Let's just take a minute or two and uh, kind of uh, stand back, look at your, your pieces so far, touch up what you want to touch up. Get it the way you want it. Before we go too much farther. So when you get to this point, you should have the chocolate and the top little design finished on the upper right chocolate, the lower, or the rectangle, the lower left rectangle chocolate. Both of the circle ones, you should have your sprinkles on the top left and your little caramel nuggets 
on your bottom right. You should have your little twirl here on your circle, white chocolate on the upper right, and your little line work down here on your bottom, chocolate white. Okay. Next thing we're going to do, let's jump back to our heart. We're going to make it start to pop. If you notice here, the red is the base coat, but then you can see, starting to see the shading in it, right? You've got a highlighting here on the right side. I'll show you how to do that. And you've got a darker shade. You've got your shading right here, your darker shading right here on the bottom left. So it's like your heart is kind of cut in half. Think of it like that, from top to bottom. On your right, you've got a lighter shade. And your left, you've got a darker shade. And that's what gives it, when you get this done, that's what gives it the 3D kind of look. Now, I am, uh, I, I think I'm going to go ahead and use my filbert. If you don't have that, uh, use uh, a smaller half-inch brush. Or if you have a quarter-inch brush, that would work also. Have what you use what you got and it'll it'll work out fine. Okay, so let's start with our uh, let's start with the highlight, which is the uh, lighter shade on the right side of your heart. So I'm actually going to load up my brush in red, just the same red we used to do the heart. I'm dipping a little bit in white. You see that? So I'm mixing those two paints right there. It's not much on my brush. In fact, I'm not even sure. I better dip a little bit more because it's making a lighter shade of pink, basically. And I don't want much on my brush. So I'm really kind of moving most of it off of my brush, to be honest. The right side is kind of touching the top of the heart very gently. I'm very, I mean, I'm not really pushing my brush down. It's just very, barely touching, skimming, skimming that surface, barely. It's almost a dry brush. If you painted using dry brush, this is what it is. I wash it out. While my brush is still a little bit damp, I'm kind of blending that. And it's easier if you blend wet on wet, and our red was already dry, so it's a little bit more difficult to do. So if it's easier for you to shade doing wet on wet, then put some red down. Then touch that white on top of that red. You see, it's a little bit easier to do that way. So what you want to end up with is the right side of your heart is a lighter shade. The red's in the middle. So you've got it. So you highlight it there. Let me pull that closer to the camera. Okay. There that is. So now we're going to let your highlight here, and we're going to do the shading part on the left side. And I'm basically going to touch the brown. I've got a little bit of brown. This isn't a very large area. So I'm just taking brown and doing the same thing, going over that red on the left side. You just want a little hint of a darker shade there on the right side. And this will create that heart to almost look like it's coming up out of the, the candy box. I didn't use much. I might have to go over it again. I don't know. We'll see. Just a little bit of brown. Not much. I don't want a dark line. I don't want that. 
and you want it to all blend together. Where you've got a lighter, either a light pink, light red, and then red in the center area, and then your dark one on the side. So we're basically kind of doing the same thing with your strawberry. The right side of your strawberry, so use that same kind of light color, almost a dry brush, and you're just doing that on the right side of that strawberry. A little lighter color. Depending on your paint and your shades that you've got, just kind of, you want it to show up. You don't want to see like a bright white line by any means, but you want it to be a hint of color, but enough that you can see it. Now on the left side, you're doing the same thing. I'm loading my brush in the brown. And on the, I'm almost a dry brush. I don't have a whole lot of paint on it. I'm just gently adding a little bit of brown to the right side of that strawberry. So it's basically the same thing on both the strawberry and the heart. Shading takes some practice. These are just small little uh, areas, so it's it's not too uh, difficult, but uh, it does. The line work with a liner brush takes some practice. I know most uh, artists, and most people in the uh, membership, a lot of times that is some of the challenges that they have, line work and uh, shading things. And it, it does take, it takes some practice for sure. I'm just kind of touching up, see how everybody's doing here. Still doing good, guys. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is, uh, I need to add just, a, I think, a little bit more white to that strawberry. Just a little bit. Now watch it. Like I said, I don't want it. It's almost a dry brush. And I don't want it to uh, jump out at me. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is uh, I'm going to get, you can either use your liner or your round three. Now I'm going to use my round, my small round brush and I'm dipping it in the green that we've got here, loading it in my brush and we're going to make, what we're going to do is make the strawberry leaves. See these little guys right here? I've got three on top of my strawberry. I didn't want to uh, overdo that because I wanted the emphasis actually on the strawberry and the heart, not the leaves. So I'm not putting very large leaves. Now I'm starting out with the leaf in the center. And my center leaf is smaller. Kind of depends on how much size you've got. Now this is pretty close to my heart here. So I'm going to start at the top of that heart and I'm just doing like a teardrop, and I need to add some water to this. It's kind of thick. So I'm just doing a teardrop type leaf on the top. When you get the top, then you kind of know where to put your other two. Got another teardrop right there. I'm going to turn it around. Do another one on the other side. Not very big. Now these are going to, actually this one's going to touch the heart. But I, if I'd have done it again, I would have uh, probably not touched the heart. Not uh, got it that close. But it is. It is what it is, right guys? So uh, here is the one. See, I've got a small, but I have a little bit more room to work with here. 
the angle of the berries and stuff. So here, uh, you probably don't have that because you, if you used a tracer, you should have got it exactly like this. So yeah, I've got a leaf here on the right, a leaf here on the left, and one right there, right? Okay. Now, that will probably need a couple of coats of green, possibly. Mine does. I'll get another little coat here real quick. Now, if you want to dip your brush in the white and kind of tip those ends of that uh, leaf, that kind of adds a little bit of a highlight in the white, and while, especially while it's wet, kind of has a little bit of a, shows up a little bit better, too. We're about to get all of the design here. Now our heart here has just a small little highlight and I've done that with my liner and barely touched it in the red. I'm not red, I'm sorry. Barely touched it in the white. And on the top right, just kind of made a little. I used to call them polywogs, guys. I don't know if you know anything about polywogs, uh, <laughs> but I used to call these little things polywogs. Back in the day when I did decorative painting classes, oh my goodness, I'm getting old. Getting old, old, old girls. Old. Okay, we've got all the designs here except we need some strawberry seeds. Now these little critters are teeny tiny and you do want them teeny tiny and the way to get them teeny tiny is you take your liner the same way I've been telling you dip it in the water pull off pull away some of that black and get just a little bit on your brush Get it to where your strawberry is kind of upright. And I mean, we're talking tiny little things. You're probably not even, I'm not even sure if you're going to be able to see them. I'll show you closer to the camera. Just a little guys. Something that looks like a little small. Can you see those? Uh, let me move. Maybe, maybe you can see them there. Can't tell if the camera might be blurring. It's kind of close. So I'm trying to show you guys. But uh, I got just a little bit of seeds on there. And sometimes on my seeds, just for fun and kicks and giggles, because they're just so much fun to create, I add a little bit of white or a yellow on one side of those seeds, it kind of makes them pop. You know, when you get a strawberry, sometimes there are those little, little tiny seeds there. Let me see if you can see this one now. Mm, I'm trying to get it where maybe you can see, but I'm not positive if you can or not. And I apologize about that if you can't see. Uh, they are tiny though, but you should be able to see everything else. So let's go over what we've got right now and what we've done so far. We've got the base coat of the pink. Of course, we traced everything out. We got the base coat of the pink. Now we sketch in our chocolates and we've got two rectangle chocolates. We've got two square ones, we've got two circle, a heart and a strawberry with dip chocolate and uh, leaves. I need to work on my leaves. Those look a little mushed okay so now to start adding this is going to finish this off even though the chocolates are looking pretty good we still got some more shading to do so looky here and we're going to start with the chocolates first 
basically the same way we did the heart, where we had one side that was a little lighter and one side a little darker. That's what we're going to do with the two white chocolates here. So I want you to grab a flat brush now, either a quarter or your half inch brush. Give it a damp, blot it on your towel. And we're going to dip it. I'm going to have to get me some more brown paint, guys. Let me get some more brown paint out of here. I don't need much, but I've got a little bit here. So I've got my half inch brush. It's a little bit moist, but not dripping. It's not dripping at all. And I'm dipping just a corner of it. See, just a corner of that in the brown. And I'm working it a couple times on my palette. See that? So when I've got my heart up right here, the left side and the bottom, now we're only painting right now on the white. I'm taking it and I'm kind of darkening this. Stay on the white, a little bit of brown, and do it like that. Now look how that gives that 3D look. I'm doing this on both of the white chocolates. You're going to come down the left side and you're going to go down the bottom. Okay? Kind of like you did the heart. If you need to darken your heart, now's the time to do that too. Darken your heart and you darken your strawberry a little bit on the left. Everything was on the left in this case. Now our chocolates, the darker chocolates, there's really nothing to do with them as far as the dark because it's not going to really show up, right? But we are going to add some highlight to it. So I'm going to wash my brush out. And as you can see, the highlight's going to show up on the dark chocolate. So on the circles, we'll start here at circles, I've got a lighter brown, almost like a, a real pale white, that's going to be on the top to the right side, just like your strawberries, top and the right side, a little bit lighter color. So let's do that. I've got my paintbrush, my flat brush, I'm dipping a little bit corner in the white. See, I don't have much on there, not much at all. I'm working it on my brush a little bit. And the reason is I don't want a lot of excess at all. I don't want much paint. And it's going to be almost like a dry brush, and I'm just skimming over the top and the right part of that brown chocolate. Both of them, actually. Start at the top of the chocolate. I'm just going to go around. Well, this might need a couple of couple of times. Like I said, you don't want to have it screaming white, like a white line. You don't want that. You just want a little bit of a lighter color. See that now? You're going to do the same thing with the top of that rectangle, chocolate, both of them. Okay. Now look how much that's starting to look more like chocolates now. It's starting to look like it's getting nestled inside the uh, candy box. We are getting finished on this, guys. Okay, here we go. Look at this one here. See all this pink? What this is, is I've got a little bit darker color, so I'm using my Filbert brush and I'm dipping it in the brown and I'm creating a wash. Now wash is quite a bit of water 
with my paint and it's a very light see how watery that is and I'm just going around leaving some pink showing but you're adding depth here so it's not very dark it's just a wash of a of the brown paint and there's no rhyme or reason to this guys you're just kind of going around in places some brown wash you've added white are you I'm excuse, sorry you've added water to your paint it's very thin and a little bit on your brush and you're just kind of darkening that pink is what you're doing you don't have to go over all of it you want to leave some of that pink showing and see how I'm going around the edge though a little darker you do want that edge a little darker here see how I'm going around right here I'm using the same brush I'm just kind of following that around and I'm creating that edge a little darker I'm just kind of blending that out that creates some depth if it gets too dark remember how we lifted a while ago some paint then take your brush get it wet and start lifting some of that paint up right now you're you're good and there's no right or wrong on here guys there's no right or wrong I'm just trying to give you a few techniques to make it look a little bit more 3d gives it a little bit more depth in your uh, little candy box now try to keep it fairly even like if you've got it a little darker up here see I'm trying to darken this area a little bit more try to keep it you know a little bit even in the uh, depth I'm just kind of scratching around there's no I, I want to see some brush strokes I don't want it doesn't have to be all smooth okay. you just play with it just play with it like you do any kind of paint now this is not a have to step, but I believe it just left more of a, a, a depth to your painting. You know, you just have more of a depth to it. Now, as you can see in this one, we have the darker and I did it darker around the edges. You can also take, if it's not dark enough this way, you can take your liner brush. Remember how we've talked about ink in your paint, add some water. And then if you want it darker, you can go around. That's entirely up to you. And see, so you can create that darker line. But it, it does take some, a little bit of practice. Sometimes it's easier instead of going around all at once, do sections. See how I'm doing just a little bit at a time. Sometimes that's easier for people to do. But it's good practice if you have not done a lot of line work this is really good practice and the key to line work is always make your paint flow from that brush and the only way to make that flow from the brush 
with acrylic paint is, of course, either mediums or your water. And today we're just using water. Okay, guys. We are getting towards the very end. The thing I see, do you see the white on the very tip of just a little bit of white in places? Well, we're going to do that. So I'm going to take my half inch brush. Moving, keeping, trying to keep the bristles kind of flat. And I am dipping. My paint is drying up so fast in here, guys, today. Dipping a little bit, just a tiny bit bit on my bristles and you know a dry brush it doesn't have much on there I don't have much paint on there and I'm just adding a little highlight so I'm actually turning it completely around I'm starting now I'm only on the skull up part I'm not down here in the heart and I'm just coming out and touching right on top of that dark line and pulling out pulling out now, you know, this might not be something you even want to mess with, but I don't know. It just adds a little touch of something that I thought was kind of cool. But you don't need much on your brush. Don't put much on your brush. See? Just adds a little bit. Now, of course, it's going to show up depending on how red you've made this. If you haven't made it too red, it's not going to show up a whole lot. But uh, you'll see, yeah, I'll see, it just adds a little bit of a white, just a little highlight there. Okay, and if you need to touch up a little white on your heart or anything, sometimes your fingers do the best blending. Touch a little bit of white and then just kind of blend. Sometimes that does the best. It's better than any of them sometimes. Anything you see that you might want to add, add a bit more highlight to one more time. Blend with your fingers if you like. I do. I do a lot. Kind of fun. Okay, guys. We've been on here a while. Okay, what do you think? Now, the one thing we haven't done, see, in places we did the dark inside here, there's a little bit of white. Kind of makes it pop. It almost looks like the uh, light is catching it. So I'm going to use my half-inch brush, <clears throat> just like you did the dry brushing. It's the same thing. Load your brush up a little bit. Work it out on your palette. And in places, just touch some white highlights. Few. Now this is on the pink. Just a few places. Very, very little on my brush. There is hardly nothing on that brush. I'm not even sure if you, yeah, you should be able to see it, I think. But I'm kind of trying to look at my monitor too. Just do it a few places. A little bit of highlight on that pink. And what I like to do a lot of times, and I suggest, is to step back. You know, now this is flat, but I'm going to lift, lift mine up here and look at it. And that's when I start seeing things that I need to change. Or I want to change. Or I'm proud of myself and I, I stop, you know. Uh, you have to kind of step back from your artwork, no matter whether it's a large canvas, a small canvas, whatever that you're working on. Step back after a while. We have been painting here for an hour and a half. So it's time to step back, guys, for sure. I'm going to grab me a cup of a sip of tea here and we'll talk to you a minute. So I, I, uh, you will still see the picture of this here on my page. Uh, let me change the camera here. Okay guys, I hope you've had fun uh, painting 
this Valentine uh, art. And I think it's just a sweet little painting. And you could do this any size, and maybe you did. Uh, but I just had this piece of wood, you know, and I thought I'm going to do it on this little 5x5. Five five. Uh, I think it might be 6x6, six six, but anyway. And I thought, well, that's sweet. And you can lean these little things up on a shelf, uh, give it to somebody, whatever you want to do. But uh, I, it gave a variety of different sizes and chocolates, and I knew that you would kind of learn a little bit about shading and stuff. And uh, I hope you guys have had fun, and I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, thank you for joining in uh, and, uh, on this Sunday afternoon. It's sometimes fun to uh, just this time of day uh, to, you know, have fun and do something for yourself, too. Uh, Kathy, I'm glad you had fun. And Leanne, thank you. For those that just watched, make sure uh, you get that tutorial and uh, take advantage of that and paint, paint. Uh, you don't have to have all the supplies, but, you know, if you can get you some basic, if you don't have supplies and you're just, just starting, you know, get you some basic. I always recommend for people to get uh, the uh, cheaper paints uh, if they're just starting out, of course, and then just in brushes and just just have fun with it. Just start, and uh, you don't have to go to a big expense at all, and you can get that kind of stuff everywhere now. And uh, then as you grow as an artist, and you want to do more, and you have a little bit. Uh, uh, I don't know, more pride in your work and stuff, then then start getting some more brushes, some better brushes, or maybe a little bit better paint, you know, and uh, just have fun with it and grow. So if you want any kind of information about my membership, it's only $15 a month, guys, and I give you one and two, sometimes two uh, tutorials, and they're private, they're not going out anywhere else, and you also get a skills video. Sometimes we do it in person, but lately I've been doing like a video and you will learn different skills uh, also to go along. But anyway, thank you guys. I'm so glad you joined and uh, uh, come back for more because I'll be doing some more too. So you guys have a good rest of your evening, uh, your Sunday night and much love to you. Bye-bye.